The Ferrari is blown into pieces. It's chaos. See, this is what you need, Big Chris. A little hardcore labor in your life. I mean, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for everybody, but you need this. I get it. Helping each other out's about, right? Oh, yeah. Not that and being a good wingman at the bar. What? Last few weeks, you've really seen us in crunch time on the C10, getting it ready to go. There's just very small tweaks here and there to you know get that thing going. So now it's time to shift our focus to the Testa. As you can tell, there's a long ways to go, but we got it back from our buddy Aaron Chovenitz. He did the general design and fab of the hoop. So now it's time to get in there, marry it to the body, do the you know the finish out of the fab work. You know, get it flowing with the car, ready for paint and body for when Mike gets a hold of it. On top of that, we've got suspension, we've got brakes, we've got battery, we've got headlight design, I mean, everything that you can think of left on this freaking car. And we've got, I don't know, two and a half weeks left. So for everybody who thinks we're just doing a, you know, an EV swapped car out there, dude, no, this is a full custom one-off car. There isn't a piece on this Tessarosa that hasn't been touched. So let's get after it. Got a little concave up here, convex down there. Rolls like a factory body line. Covers up a little bit of ugly in there. I think we're good, man. I think it's gonna look real good when it goes to paint and body. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea if we ripped some parts off and kind of got as far ahead on the Testarossa as we can. Spent half a day working on the hood, the fenders, the bumper, anything I could pull off of another car to get it close. So there was some little dents, a little bit of welding we had to do, but we got all that done. I got all the body work done, and now I'm gonna shoot some primer on it. Look at that. Don't get much more white than that. That's white. That's white. That is bright white. That is uh, a, <laughs> that's, that, that's that Colombian white, you know what I mean? lining out where our batteries go how many all that stuff with our actual batteries not our mock-ups so this is one stack this is 24 of our batteries um, we had a line out for our coolant plate so there's gonna be water piping running through them to keep them all clean wiring everything this is our main stack that's gonna go where the fuel cell went in the original Ferrari so we've got six going in back here that we're gonna cover up kind of make it cool display where you can walk up you can see six in the front to give us a little bit of nose weight so our core stack is going to go right here where the gas was. So right now, what we got to do, seeing how that gas tank was mounted in there floating, we're going to have to go in here and plate all this area where Kenny's at right now.
rolling in the morning. Uh, Kenny is finishing knocking out the battery tray for when we set the battery box in. It has a place to go. And what I'm working on is the headlights. Testarossas are known for their flip up headlights. I mean, it's a very signature look of these cars. We're wanting to make it a little bit more sleek, change it a little bit. So what we're gonna do is actually have them not pop up as far and then do like a nice sleek light bar. Almost like just some eyes up there, you know, real mean. Kind of lining it out, check it out. So we roll it up and then about that far, we're gonna have this light bar. So, give it a nice sleek look, maybe a little bit lower than that. And then in this face, we're gonna put a diffuser that's gonna make it look like one continuous, nice smooth light across there, but still project out, we can drive it there. Originally, we had a shorter lens. We were gonna cap all this off and have it body color, but I decided to take an in case, a full lens, picture frame it. It's all the way down underneath, everything's good. And then when it comes up, kinda looks factory. Once that's all white, it's gonna blend together really nice. Then the best thing about it, man, you'd never even know, it's just a light bar back there. Sweet, definitely bright. So like I've told you a thousand times over the years, uh, it's all hands on deck for SEMA, and uh, we're, we're short-handed, we're up against the time frame, and Christian Sosa is one of the best metal workers in the entire world. He was just down here uh, hanging out with us in Bailey, and I gave him a ring, and he goes, dude, I'll jump on a plane. I literally called him last night about seven o'clock, and it is noon, and he is here, and uh, we're gonna try to get him shoring up a couple of things. Meanwhile, I got somebody else building uh, motors and battery packs, so I gotta trim the time frame anywhere I can, and uh, bringing in respected, good, Builders is the name of the game. Freaking badass, man. I mean, it really, really came together. It's it's, it's hard to uh, get something out of my brain and put it into metal, especially since um, I don't know how to work on metal. <laughs> You're a mind reader. Nah, it's gonna be rad. So, one of the things that is really kind of crazy when you start thinking about EV and EV conversions and things like that, and the reason that I decided to do it with the Ferrari Testarossa is one, I had five of them. But uh, also, if you look at this giant 12 cylinder power plant with uh, its transmission on the rear and, and everything that they went through to make this car go, it still didn't go that fast and it didn't perform that well. We're gonna lighten it up by probably three to 400 pounds lighter. And we're gonna put this little bad boy in here. Even with our battery packs, our motor and our drive, we're going to be not only lighter weight, but that weight is still gonna be in the back of the car, which is the way the original R&D was designed. Uh, now what we're having to deal with then is more power, more torque. So those little half shafts that they put in there from the factory are not gonna work. We've gotta make some new half shafts and get those fitted to where they can handle the torque mostly. Uh, going fast is one thing, but the torque that this little motor puts out is pretty uh, crazy. I mean, at the end of the day, just like if you remember a long time ago, we built the F40 Ferrari. We built a leaner, meaner, faster, better weight, better handling, better everything 
F40 Ferrari, and I'm going to do the same thing with my Testa. And that's right, it's called the Testa. What we've done is thrown this on our jig table, got it level, got it square, got the motor level and square inside of the, the, you know, the rear subframe. What we're gonna do is build some type of trick looking motor mount off of this, this subframe to hold the motor. We have axles coming. We're gonna build the A-arms. We're gonna throw our struts in here. Everything's gonna be built on this table. We're gonna walk it over and actually throw it up in the car. So get rolling on these motor mounts. Little update on the motor mount. Decided to go with an aluminum billet. We've machined out the plate where it fits on the motor correctly. And now I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the motor mount style. I'm liking these little standoffs that I got, but I'm not real sure what I'm doing with the square tubing or not. You know, I, Kenny came over, kind of had an idea about running it flush across here. I kind of like the stair step. I don't know, man, just trying to make decisions. When it's a real big design aspect like that, I mean, you just, you don't want to jump into it and rush it, you know, it's a, it's something everybody's visually gonna walk up and see this. So it's time consuming, but uh, at the same time, it's, it's worth the time to take and, and really make a good decision. But I'm liking where it's leading right now. I'm hoping to get this side done before lunch today where I can hop on the backside, get it knocked out, and actually be able to go home on a Sunday. just be honest the suspension that was under the testa was subpar let's just say that didn't ride too well we want a little bit of adjustment we want to lower it down we want it to ride better we want to be able to adjust it when the weights in here you know better compression better rebound everything we ended up making the decision to call our guys over at Bilstein. matter of fact ryan's here now to talk to us about these coilovers so obviously dude this isn't just going to be for show Richard loves driving the cars, so we want a little bit of performance out of it. We want better handling, you know, and these things, they were all weight rated in the rear, yeah. you know, and it had just stock coilovers in it. So what type of benefits are we gonna gain from this? Essentially with all the adjustments that we have between the high speed and low speed compression mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the, uh, the rebound, uh, we're really thinking that uh, we're gonna be able to dial this in for the street and the track. What are these dampeners? I'm, I'm noticing this is, that's, yep, this that's is, something uh, I've never this seen. This is, you know, the, the next level of technology here. Yeah. So you have, uh, you have a, un, a, a damper that doesn't compress uh -huh. with a damper that does, and uh -huh. this, uh, this will compress to a certain uh, exact amount. And uh -huh. so this is, uh, you know, some of the components where you're holding off on, you uh -huh. know, this is for the circle track racing. Uh, this is, you know, these are the components that they're using, you know, to dial in that last bit that they're in, yeah. you know, when they're uh -huh. we're up against it. They want to make sure that there's still a little bit of travel left and before they get to the bottom of the piston. And this is some of the highest quality components you can get. It meets and exceeds every standard, you know, when it comes to motorsport that Bill Stein has ever, you know, come across. On top of our Bill Stein coilovers, we are truly going through and upgrading all of our drivetrain components. Uh, this EV will be fast, so we obviously need some good stopping power. And there's not a lot of choices for a 1989 Ferrari Testarossa. Our guys over at Brimbro hooked us up. I like to tell myself size doesn't matter, but uh, in this case it does. The bigger rotor has obviously got more room to cool for one, and it's a wider diameter, it's a bigger circumference to where when these, these pads grab, it doesn't have to strain as much as this little bitty rotor. Think about grabbing a wheel on the very, very outside and stopping it and then try to grab it on the inside of your spokes and try to stop it, how much more pressure it is on the inside. So obviously going to bigger rotors is just a massive help in stopping power and dissipating heat. And then these massive dudes, 
big six pistons. We're not even hardly gonna be able to press the brakes without freaking locking the tires up. These things are nuts. Hell, once we do this, put all new bushings in it. I mean, our whole drivetrain's upgraded and fresh. I'm really ready to drive this car. It's gonna be sweet. All right, so I popped in and the guys put in a few extra days on the weekend and uh, the battery packs are all sorted for the Ferrari. Um, I also, since we're going so far with it, with Bilstein and Boston wheels and, you know, bigger brakes, bigger everything and more power with the electric motor, I decided that uh, I wanted to have the underneath of it dry iced. And since it's kind of immovable right now for just rolling around, they came here this morning. So I'm going to go out and see how they're doing. Somebody's already packing up their tools. So how'd it go, man? Good, went really well. Happy with the results. Got it all cleaned up for you guys. Good platform. Man, that's so. crazy. Yeah, look brand new. And it didn't take off the part number stamp right there. That's the beauty of dry ice is being able to clean the, uh, the surface or the substrate and leave anything underneath. That's why it's really popular in the automotive space is being able to clean something and then still have the factory paint marks or anything that underneath. That is so crazy. And this is all nice and neat. I can just... Yeah. Kind of re-undercoat the fender wells. What was the hardest part, man? Hardest part was probably the wheel wells. Um, stripping that factory undercoating, which uh, <laughs> is difficult. Uh, so we had a lot of time in here to, to get all that factory undercoating strips so that you guys can now prep it, repaint it, resurface it however you want. This is perfect. We got to just re, uh, reapply into there. Yeah. We'll get all this cleaned up. It's, as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, the biggest thing is being able to have air. So fortunately you've got a pretty badass air system here for me to be able to plug into. If not, then you gotta bring a, a mobile compressor or something uh, to the job site. If you're doing a car, maybe you're a do-it-yourself or doing it at home or uh, what have you, or even if you're a big shop like we are, this is a game changer when it comes to uh, getting these cars prepped and ready and knowing what you're really dealing with. Uh, and it saves a lot of time on the handwork, especially since uh, he was the one that did it. <laughs> <laughs> The original bushings, so they're like 40 odd years old. They perish, they split, and you're going to get movement in the car as it's traveling down the road like this, especially with the power it's going to have in it. So, new bushings are essential, really. So our Bilstein shock showed up yesterday. We threw them in the car, they fit good, but one thing, these both have eyelets to where we need a plate. So what we gotta do is make some shock tabs to mount and adapt to our Ferrari frame. So I got all of our mounting hardware for our Bilstein shocks to go onto the frame. Everything's looking good. It's fitting correctly. We got our Brembo brake fitting on here. They look great. We're going to pull measurements for axles. But for now, I'm going to hop back over on the test stuff with Sosa to get this last little bit of like body work and everything done. We're going to blow this back apart, get it painted, and get everything back over to Mike. We've got roughly, I don't know, 13 days left until our expected day to lead the head of SEMA. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and follow the channel because, I mean, the next couple weeks on these builds is going to be absolutely insane.